This is the module two mid module review. The first question asks us to fill in the chart. We have to first write the expression and then write the value of each expression. To write the value, we need to simplify each one. That's how we get an answer to an expression. We simplify it and we do not use an equal sign. So first it says 26 times the sum of 84 and 30. So it's 26 times, and then we have to find the sum of 84 and 30. Now we need to solve this. So the first thing we need to do is that we need to add the 84 and the 30. And when we add the 84 and the 30, we get 114. And then we have to take that answer, and we need to multiply 114 times the 26. And when we multiply 114 times 26, we get 2,964. So now we're going to do the next one, which has to divide the difference between 1,500 and 700 by 5. The difference tells me to subtract. So we have to divide the difference. So 1,500 minus 700, there's our subtraction, divided by 5. So the first thing we need to now go do is we need to do what's in the parentheses, which is the 1,500 minus the 700, which gives us 800. And then we have to take the 800 and divide that by 5. When we take 800 and we divide it by 5, we get 160. The next is another one with the sum, and it says to take the sum of 8 12. Sum tells me to add, and when I have 8 12 or 17 12, that's multiplication. So I have to do 8 12, and I have to do 17 12, and I want to find the sum of them, so I'm adding them together. So in order to solve this one, I have to go over to the side and do 12 times 8, which we know is 96. And then we have to do 17 times 12, which is 204. And when I add 96 plus 204, I get 300. Next one, we have our 12 times the sum of 44 and 2. So the sum again is telling me to add. So we want 12 times the sum. We can put a multiplication sign in there, or we can just leave it next to the parentheses. Both of those tell me to multiply the sum of 44 and 2. So first thing I need to do in order to simplify that is to add 44 plus 2, and I get 46. And then I'm taking my 46 and multiplying it by 12. And when I take my 46 and multiply it by 12, I get 552. Next one, they gave me the numbers this time, and they want me to write the expression in words. So here I know that I'm doing 10 times something. So I'm going to start by writing 10 times. And what's going on is in here is addition, so I'm finding 10 times the sum, because it's addition, of 950 and 5. So now in order to solve it, first thing I need to do is what's in parentheses. So the 950 plus 5 is 955, and when I multiply that at 10, I can use the zero rule nice and easy, and I get 9,550. And the last one on this page, once again I see there's a multiplying by 13, and in here is a sum. So I can say the sum of 620 and 140 times 13. And then I need to solve it, so I have to go on to the side and do 620 plus 140. And when I add 620 plus 140, I get 760. And then I need to multiply that by 13. And when I multiply 760 by 13, I get 9,880. And that's how I do the first page of my review. The next thing that I need to do is question two, which wants me to compare the two expressions using less than, greater than, or equal to. 
and show how you know. So I have to have some work because it says to show how you know. So this would be 1,200. And then over on the right-hand side, first thing I need to do is solve the parentheses. And then I have to figure out 23 times 56, and that's 1,288. So when I look at those two numbers, I know that 200 times 6 is less than 23 times 8 times 7. The next question, I saw 47 times 21, and 47 times 21 is 987. And then over here, I have 60 11s minus 3 11s. So what I'm going to do is actually, since they have the same unit, I'm going to do this subtraction. I shouldn't say it's times, it's subtraction, which gets me to 57 11s. And when I have 57 11s, it really means 57 times 11. So 57 times 11 is 627. So 987 and 627, this answer is greater. So now if I go to the next problem, it's 24 times 14, and 24 times 14 is 336. And then over here, I have 28 fours, which means 28 24 which means 28 times 24. And doubling something means to multiply it by 2. So 28 times 24, I would have to solve first. And 28 times 24, if we did it on the side, we end up with 672. And 672 doubled, since we already have a number that's larger than here. I know I don't have to multiply it by 2 because I already know that that's larger. Now on the bottom, we have to solve. We've learned how to do this. Since this has a 0, the first thing that I should do is ignore the 0 and just do 65 times 2. When I do 65 times 2, I get 130, and I put my 0 back in, which gives me 1,300 and I write it on the answer line. Now when I look over at this problem, it's the same numbers, there's just a decimal, so I don't have to do all the work again. I can use my original work and just know that now there's a decimal here, so I jump in one, so my answer would be 130. If you put the decimal in the zero, that is also correct. Next, on the next page, it tells me to multiply using the standard algorithm. Show your work below each problem, and then write the product in the blank. Please make sure you do that. So when I take my 415 times 55, I get 22,825, and I need to make sure that I put it up here. The next problem is 506 times 689. I add it all up. And I get 348,634. And once again, make sure that I put the product on the line. Next question is number five. We are now working in a word problem. And we've talked about when we work in word problems, we need to circle and underline. So for a school trip, the school bought 74 sandwiches. And they were $3.21 each. And then they bought 19 bags of chips for $1.51 each, and they want to know how much the school spent in all. So first I have to figure out how much my sandwich is, which are $3.21. I have to multiply that times 74. And when I do that, I get this number down here, which is 23,754. But I have to remember that I jumped twice for the decimal. So I really spent $237.54. That's just for sandwiches, and I have to figure out the bag of chips. So now I'm going to go and figure out my bag of chips. So I had 19 bags of chips. They each were $1.51. 
And once again, I need to make sure that when I'm doing this work, there's a decimal, so I have to jump two spots. And now I know my chips and my sandwiches, and I want to know how much did the school spend at all. So I have to add my sandwiches to my chips. And when I add, then we line up our decimals to add so our place values are lined up. And I end up with $266.23. And then I would write my sentence that the school spent $266.23. Next question is question six. It's about Jeannie. She makes hair bows to sell at the craft fair. Each bow requires one and five tenths yards of ribbon. That's the general information before I go to part A. Now part A tells me if Jeannie wants to make 102 bows, how many yards of ribbons will she buy and show that work? So I'm going to take my number that has more digits and put that on the top because I find that easier to work with. You can do it the other way. And my one and five tenths yards. And I'm going to multiply. And then I'm going to add it together. And I have one jump this time. So I get that I need 153 yards of ribbon. And then we go on to the next part of the question. These two questions go together. And it says, if the ribbon costs 40 cents per yard, what's the total cost in dollars? And that's important. So I have 153 yards, and I want to multiply it by 40 cents. So many of you would just write 40. When I'm talking about money, this is how I write 40 cents. 40 cents has a decimal in front of it. So now I'm going to use my zero rule and ignore my zero for a minute. I'm going to multiply, and then I put my zero back in. And now I have two jumps. And I have figured that out now it is $61.20. So I'm going to write $61.20 is the cost of the ribbon. Now, I'm going to go on to the next question, which is down here. And it says a manufacturer is making 1,000 times as many bows as Jeannie to sell in the stores. Well, Jeannie had made 102 bows. Write an expression to show how many yards of ribbon the manufacturer will need. So. If Jeannie has how many yards? We're going to go back right up here. Okay, Jeannie had 153 yards she needed. So I can now take this question and I can get rid of this. Jeannie needed 153 yards. And now I need a thousand times that. Does anybody know what I need to do? They have to ask themselves. Well, if she had, we're going to go right back up here. 153 yards. And she takes her 153 yards and she multiplies it by 1,000. When I multiply, I move my decimal to the right or I can just add my zeros back in. That's just something that we should know. We are not solving though because it says do not calculate. So now I'm going to go back up into the question and see does this make sense. So some companies making a thousand as many as Jeannie. Jeannie made 102. So if Jeannie made 102 and they're doing a thousand times that, this is how we write that. And then how do I figure out how many yards of ribbon that is? If I go back up here and we know that we need one and five tenths for every ribbon, we now need to change it and write it like this. So they're going to figure out how many ribbons first, 
and then multiply that times the yards. Now to set that up with an expression using exponents, I take my same expression. A thousand means 10 to the third because there's three zeros. And then I can multiply it times the 1.5 or 1 and 5 tenths for each one. And that's how we do our mid-module review.